Uh, week, welcome to week seven of Maine high school football. Um, so we had an interesting day today. There was high powered matchups and power outage postponements. Um, yep. First one, let's do the power. Let's do the uh, high powered matchup between Oxford Hills and Thornton Academy. It's turned out to be an, an interesting game. I think that Oxford Hills probably feels happy about how it was able to play defense against Thornton. It just the mistakes yeah. kind of added up in, the, in that second quarter. Yep. Um, the Vikings played Thornton Academy really tough. They uh, Eli Soren had, I think, three picks and a fumble in the first half. Uh, and then fumbled again in the second half. And with all that, the Vikings only lost 31 to 23. So uh, a, a strong showing defensively from Oxford Hills. Um, they they gave up a fumble return for a touchdown, and uh, they had a pick six also given up to Thornton. But defensively didn't give up uh, a whole lot. They had a pick six also. Oh, no, I'm on it. Hang on. There's oh, that was me. 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 Okay. Here we go. Um, but yeah, I thought Oxford Hills played uh, pretty well given how they started on offense. Uh, but Thornton is, uh, you know, the best team in the state for a reason. And they, I was excited to be able to watch them finally. And um, Jack Emerson, the Thornton quarterback, was awesome he can run he can throw he's basically Eli Soren I think Eli can throw it better than than Jack but Jack can can run and run over people it seemed to take two three four guys to bring him down and some of their other running backs too it seemed to to do that um but Oxford Hills was right with them there wasn't much of a yard discrepancy overall especially in the first half and um if it wasn't for the turnovers who knows how that game would have ended um but uh, strong showing by our area Vikings. And I hope selfishly that we get to see that game one more time in the playoffs. It could happen, but um, uh, both teams would have to get through Bonnie Eagle again and maybe Scarborough or, Scarborough or Bangor. Right. Um, so, but it could happen. And I think um, it seems like the, the regular season matchup doesn't always – it, it, it isn't always the team who wins the regular season matchup doesn't always win the state championship matchup. It seems like when it comes to right. class A. Yeah. And I think if anything, the Falcons showed that they can play with them. I wasn't tired. If we would have started this 20 minutes earlier, Adam, I wasn't, I wasn't even tired then. Oh, my bad. Yeah. He got to not even tired to yawning tired real fast. Yeah, but totally different Adam, person. If you have kids, you'll understand. I'm, uh, I'm not even, I was a totally different person if you would have told us when you got home. Hey, I'm out here uh, going to work in the morning and then coming out and then going to work again. So I'm out here grinding. Um, I'm grind season. Yeah, it is. It is the season. Uh, but Thank you, Lee, for sending me to this game because I had a lot of fun. It was um, the most packed I've ever seen the Goon Complex. Um, I mean, there was a line, like probably 30 people long, just to get through the ticket entrance. And then the whole bleachers were filled. The people lined the whole field. It was a really fun atmosphere. When Oxford Hills kind of started coming back in the second half, it got really, really loud. Uh, It's just a whole lot of fun. And I think Oxford Hills... Um, showed that they can kind of hang with them. And if, if Soren, the quarterback, Eli can, you know, limit the mistakes and not try to do too much, which is what Mark Soren said he did in the first half, just tried to make too many plays. Um, they can, I think, hang right with them. But you, you said it, the playoffs is kind of a different animal and we'll see. Cause uh, we'll also learn a little bit more about Oxford Hills because they have Scarborough and then Bangor to finish the regular season. So um, their regular season's definitely not over, and um, but I'm I'm just really excited for the the Class A playoffs here coming up. 
Yeah, they might have Scarborough. They uh, Scarborough had to cancel today's game against um, yep. Lewiston because of COVID cases. So who knows how long that how long that will last? And um, JJ D Hernandez just hit home run. Um, but um, oh, Kike Hernandez, yay! So yeah, who knows how that how long that's gonna last? But but um, Bangor also lost their game to Sanford, so they put. They played Lewiston for the second time today, yep. and they beat they beat Lewiston forty nine to fourteen. Yeah, uh, um, Donovan Jackson played this week, and he brought a kick return back for a touchdown. I think they took like a seven to six lead early, um, and I was like, "Ooh!" And then I kind of lost track of the game, and it kind of ended how I kind of figured it would. But uh, yep, yeah, credit to Bangor for taking the game again and uh, giving Lewiston another game, and but Bangor pretty good team they just have that weird it's kind of an outlier but not really because it's thornton academy but they got smoked by thornton but other than that they've they've really been uh playing well they have a win over scarborough this season so um strong team in class a i think yeah and uh we're two weeks two weeks away from the big edward little lewiston matchup um yeah. on november 4th. 30th it, so would be like the sixth or the 29th. No, it'd be the 29th, so it'd be the fifth if you're doing November. I don't know. Yeah, I think it is okay, November, so maybe we're three weeks away. Maybe we're, yeah. No, it's gonna be two know. weeks away. What's that? It's gotta be two weeks away. Yeah, that's what I thought, but I thought I saw that the game is in November. <laughs> um, I know how to do that. I know how to use Google. Let's Edward Little Lewison's on the 29th. Okay. Maybe it was. Two years ago, in November, and I'm still stuck in that. In that. Um, okay, but anyways, uh, Edward Little. So Lewiston is one and six, and Edward Little is zero oh and seven after they lost to Noble today. I thought this might be the one that they could get, um, just because Noble's Noble's a good team, but they're Class B, and sometimes, sometimes there's a big drop off. But I guess there's not. So yeah. Lewiston, Lewiston lost thirty-one to zero. Edward Little. What's that? But Edward Little. He said Lewiston. Oh, sorry. Edward Little. Yeah, I, see, I wouldn't have made that mistake. <laughs> really? 20 minutes ago. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's funny. I mean, looking at the yardage, uh, Edward Little had like, I think, nine less yards than Noble did. But pick six on the first drive didn't help. And uh, Edward Little just couldn't finish off drives. Um, and just... You know, they showed flashes. They they passed the ball, you know, fairly well with, you know, Jack Keith throwing around to all his receivers. Um, but he was pressured a lot, um, especially, you know, coming off the edge. So that didn't help. Uh, and Noble's just got a really good player in Anthony Prack, their running back, who, um, you know, head coach Keenan Blindo, you know, noted is a, you know, was named a Fitzpatrick uh, kind of favorite by the, the press herald. Yeah. Um, not a very big guy, but, you know, one of those guys that finds a small hole in the line and, and next thing you know, you blink and he's scoring a touchdown. Um, but he was big, especially, you know, second half getting those, those touchdowns. Um, yeah, Noble, they, they kind of won the, the battle on the line, especially their defensive line against Edward Little's offensive line. And I think that was the big thing is, you know, stopping Edward Little from those drives uh, to be able to finish and, Try to keep it a game. Yeah, and every little they held them to not to not very many yards too. Yeah, the defense did, and I think um, the running back got all but like thirty or forty of, the, of Noble's yardage. He was responsible for that. So, um, so it seems like the defense didn't do a terrible a terrible job. It was just you know that you know starting off giving up seven points on a pick six and then. You know, giving Noble some short fields certainly didn't help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, turnovers. Turnovers are the name of the game in Class A today, I guess. Sure. Um, uh, somebody named Justin Pelletier said that no one can compete with Thornton. They need to play prep schools or, you know, get better. Oxford Hills did. Oh, he's being sarcastic. Um, yeah, but that's – yeah, but it's also hard for Lewiston and Edward Little to build a program playing against those schools. Oxford Hills is in a lot better position to compete. 
to grow and compete under those conditions. Um, plus, getting easy, getting better is not that easy these days because everybody else is also getting better and spending a lot more time. Some schools are able to spend a lot more time doing stuff. They just have better, better programs to improve. Um, yeah, improving just isn't. It's not that easy anymore. It's not just like it's not. It's no longer just working hard. You have to like. Yeah. Work really like everything needs to or put the money the right way. put money into it. Everything in the program needs to click the right way. You yeah. need continuity, you need, you know, quality coaching, you need the, you know, just the youth programs, you need the right, you know, kids, talented kids. Yeah, I yeah. talked to Kyle about it, the coach at Thornton uh, a couple days ago. And he was saying that yeah, we were talking about how they have a, a pretty good youth program and how oxford hills is like has a good good sized middle school team and it's he was just talking about how you just need numbers and uh make them want to stay throughout their youth progression and then by high school they they hopefully like football and you have a bunch of them that like football and are getting better and um that's kind of how you grow it. and he said oxford hills was doing just that and kind of following their playbook because thornton always has i mean thornton's a big school but they always have a lot of a lot of kids playing and like their JV teams and their freshman teams always have a bunch of guys. I mean, I was talking to someone at Lewiston the other day that their middle school teams, they have a seventh and eighth grade, two different teams, and they have like 30 something kids each. Like it's it's just a, a factory. So, um, yeah. yeah, you need a you need a lot of things going right. Yeah. Yeah. And then those kids are going to. Yeah. Those kids who are on those teams have to then come to be freshmen and most likely sit on the bench for a, a team that's not very good. It takes a lot of patience from the players too. Yeah. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's true, but it's, it's really hard to build when you're, when half of your games are against teams that you really don't have much of a chance against. Right. Um, but um, and also, I just like dismissing what this Justin Pelletier says whenever I can. It's, it's fun. True. It's always been fun for me. Yep. Um, when I said uh, JD, JD Martinez at the home run, I meant Kike Hernandez, I think. Yeah, and the um, Red Sox just lost. So. Oh, it's over. Yeah. So um, that's that too bad. I hate to, hate to see that. You hate to see it. Um, so shut then, your camera off. <laughs> and then uh, Levitt, uh, Levitt fell behind. They, Struggled in the first half against York. Uh, they were down 14 to 7, I believe. But they came back and won 31 21. And it sounds like they had good games from Hunter. Hunter Hayes threw a, a key touchdown pass. Um, and then uh, he also ran for one and had an interception. And then Noah Carpenter, who played quarterback last week, and I'm assuming this week as well, he ran for a lot of yards. Um, yeah, it seems like they're they're doing a two quarterback thing where they just kind of wh whoever is working at the time or fits the fits the moment, they, they just go with them. Cause it, yeah, it looks like it was Hunter Hayes run carpenter run Hayes touchdown pass. Um, Hayes had another interception. He had one last week against Cape. Um, so a good win. I knew that York was York played Cape tough. They hadn't lost before their Cape game two weeks ago. So uh, a strong team and, um, you come off that emotional win against Cape, and then you move into a York team that um, I think had lost two in a row, but is strong. Maybe you overlook them a little bit or not as focused as you were as like for the Cape game, and um, they bring it to you, but love it. They've been around enough. They've done this before, and they they uh, found a way to get a win. They've got two really, really good quarterbacks, and it's a, it's a good problem to have if you're Mike Hathaway and, and love it. Yeah, and I think York's pretty confident. They they were they're pretty confident against Levitt. Because I remember two years ago, I think it was York and Levitt in the C South final, and uh, York was fairly confident that if uh, Levitt didn't bring their best, they were going to get beat, or they you know they could beat them. And obviously, it didn't happen. I think I think Levitt handled them pretty easily, but. Those your guys have some. There's the. They're a little bit spicy, and I like that. Yep. From them, so spicy. Um, Michelle Hathaway says, "Thank, uh, 
Congrats to the Hornets. Yeah. Sting. Yep. Um, see what else we got yeah. going on today. What other? So that's a good game. That's a good win for them. And they play. Who do they finish? They have uh, two. More, they have two more games. Who do they you know they finish up with? I'll who's, I'll pull it up if you want to get. To they've that. they've played kind of the top teams in C South. Yeah, they've kind of gone through their gauntlet. Yeah, like, Freiburg so, next week. Like, oh yeah, Freiburg's really good though. So, that, so that's another test. Good for them. That'll be that'd be good for both teams. At Levitt. Okay. And then yeah, Freiburg. Yeah, Freiburg's yeah, five and zero. Oh. Nope, just kidding. That's Levitt. Let me get to Freiburg. <laughs> Freiburg's four and two. Yeah, not bad though. Um, how about let's move on to uh, Class B. Looks like Mount Blue got shut up by Mesolonsky, forty-one to zero. Yep. Um, another tough loss for the the Zoo Crew of mm-hmm. Mount Blue. Yep. Um, and uh, in Class D, we had a we it looked like we had a we had a good game on tap with uh, Freeport traveling to Winthrop to take on Winthrop Monmouth Halldale, but uh, an accident on the two hundred two, which happens knocked out the power at the football game, which fairly happens. And so the game has been postponed not to Saturday, but to Monday afternoon um, at 3.30. 3.30. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Dave San Hilaire texted me and said, a uh, truck took out a transformer on 202 along with our lights. Yeah. <laughs> They're playing 3.30 on Monday. Yeah. So, just, just that's crazy. So, so that's just another reason that game, another weird reason that game has been canceled. Yeah. Um, eight man football. Spruce Mountain took it to uh, Lake Region. Lake Region. They scored on their first two play uh, plays from scrimmage. Oh, wow. touchdowns. Isaac Parker and Camden Phillips. Yep. Um, so that's pretty. I mean, that, I think it's not a surprise that they that the Phoenix won, but it's a surprise that they won like that. Yeah, they're they're cruising right now. Yeah. I mean, they're in the big school, so they big school, the large school division, so they have to um, they have to play like uh, Chevrolet and Mount Ararat in the postseason. But yeah, no, they're doing but some good stuff. They feel good about what they what they have, and uh, David Fried. Um, last week, I was talking to him on the phone, and he said he knew at the beginning of the season how good his team was, but he he wanted them to find out and. And I think they have. They've scored 50, 46, and then 50 in their last three games. So yeah. um, they're, uh, they're figuring it out at the right time. So I'm excited they to see what they do in the playoffs. Yep. They're lighting it up. Light them up, up, up. But, uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and the, another eight-man game, uh, there's a few interesting scores. Yeah. Uh, Levin, or Grady Gloucester and Booth Bay play, played a close game, and – Booth Bay ended up winning 34-26. Well, back and forth game. 34-28. Yeah. I thought Gray, I thought Gray would win that one pretty good. I thought I didn't, I'm surprised that Booth Bay was able to stick with them. Well, you know. But what do you know? You know, that happens. Life happens. It does. Yep. And then um Deergo and Yarmouth. Deergo oh, won 58 to 46. Yeah. Trenton Hutchinson, Hutchinson had three receiving t- touchdowns and he returned a punch a punt for a touchdown uh dakota thompson's hat thompson hat tompkins had a receiving touchdown and curtis errington who adam wrote about in that story appeared in, in friday's sun journal he had two rushing touchdowns and charlie houghton had threw for threw for three tds and ran for one um there's so many tutties lee look out for charlie houghton next year the senior i know He's doing yeah. some good stuff. And this is his first year playing quarterback, I believe. Yeah, that's wild. So they're coming along. They're really coming along. And um, the other team that kind of had a surprising result today was um, – where that page go? Mountain uh, Valley. Mountain Valley beat oh. Old Orchard Beach 48-26. to 26. I didn't see that coming at all. Yeah, they – And Diego broke them. Diego broke OOB. Yeah, I guess so. Diego, Telstar started it, and Diego continued it, and Mountain Valley just finished it, maybe. Yeah, Mountain Valley. That's a very rude thing to say about 
high school kids and i didn't mean to come out that, that was we just took out a whole area but yeah. that's okay but no um, that, that's uh, I, I that's good good for, good for what i want to say really is good for mountain valley to yeah that's awesome because uh old orchard beach is not a bad team you go on the road it's a long drive and you know that's a good confidence booster for Devin roberts too that is yeah. a long drive and they, yeah um, they've and they've struck i mean yeah mountain valley has not they've struggled at times too so yeah they put they put up 46 on boots bay in their first win uh on the 17th of september but then um in their other three games that they've played they scored zero six and 16 so to put up 48 to end the regular season that i mean that's a really cool way to go into the the uh the postseason here um and it's cool that they just they could finally put some points on the board and end the regular season with a win because i knew they had it you could see that when i watched them play dirigo they had um the athletes and it just dirigo played really good defense and they were still trying to kind of figure this whole eight-man thing out but uh cool to see them get a win here yeah and that yeah that that's uh the playoffs start next week for eight-man football i don't know what the brackets will look like or if a team like telstar gets a a buy for finishing in first place um but it's good i think in the small school is gonna be really interesting in the south yeah uh, i'm looking at the yeah. standings right now i don't know that they're updated because teams might play tomorrow but telstar one diego two and mountain valley three there goes two wow huh. well five and two no one else wow. in the division has that many except for telstar that's pretty good you're right about charlie houghton um He's got really good size. Got a pretty good arm. Good athlete, really. basketball player too. Yeah. yeah, really good basketball player. I got to find out how many uh, tackles Curtis Arrington had because I admit I went into that story just thinking of him as only a running back, and then his coach says last week he had thirty tackles as a linebacker, and I was like, my goodness. So I, I know that sounds him. impossible, but then when he mentioned how many plays there were, yeah, right, said yeah. there was over like uh, one hundred and twenty plays or something. So. He um, also wow. you know, carried the water bottles. He, you know, taped up his teammates' ankles before the game. Yep. I mean, I don't think he did that stuff, but he all around have. great. Yeah, just a great person. <laughs> um, I think that's pretty much pretty much all for today for today's game. Foxcroft beat Noble forty one or Poland forty one to six. Oh yeah. Um, Foxcroft think, just really good class D team. Yeah, yeah and they, they, they're, supposed, wagon. they're supposed to play. I think they're supposed to play at Winthrop next week, but I, I kind of think that game will be moved. If it's scheduled for Friday, it will probably be moved to Saturday because I would think, yeah. Winthrop is playing on Monday. Tomorrow we have Trape and Telstar, and I don't think there's a whole lot to say because Telstar, Telstar has beaten should, they've beaten yeah. a lot of teams pretty badly this year, but none bad more badly than uh Trape in the season opener. And then I guess Lisbon and John Baps are playing on Saturday. I don't yep. know when that game got moved, but the schedule yeah, is Friday. Know. Yeah. Um, but Lisbon, I think, has a real good chance to get a win there. John Baps, I don't think, is very um, great. Winthrop took care of them real quick. Um, and I know Lisbon's not on that level, but I think it's a good chance for Lisbon to get a win tomorrow. So we'll see. Yeah, we will see. Um, and then the Winthrop and Freeport game. Uh, Freeport's a pretty good team. Um, yeah, yeah. So Freeport has played well. That's going to be maybe the first real um, significant test for the Winthrop Monmouth Hall, though, who just seems like they've had a start and start and stop season. I don't know. It just seems like I know, and I'm waiting for them to play like, yeah, teams like Freeport and and stuff, and yeah, yeah it keeps getting stopped and moved and. I'm just like, hey, it's, I could, and I just want to find out how how good Winthrop is, but they have. I bet they want to feel and, that way too. Yeah, yeah, uh, they have Freeport on Monday, and then they have Foxcroft, and then they have Oak Hill. So I mean, we'll find out real quick. This is the yeah. meat of the schedule, but um, yeah. I have no doubt that they're really good. But you just want to see how 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 good are they? And yeah, like, are they are they like by far the best team in Class D or? You know, how do they stack up yeah. with like, you know, how how much better are they than, you know, Freeport and, and Foxcroft if they are, and even Oak Hill. Um, so, but yeah, yeah that's 
that Foxcraft game at home next week will be really fun. Yeah. Really interesting. Should be a, it should be a good one. Yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to talk about? Anything else we didn't mention today? I don't think so. I, I just did you get for food? I didn't get any food. I got there and the line was too long and uh had to get get ready to go and also use the bathroom. So I didn't get any food. Uh I'll get food at Lewiston tomorrow. I have their boys' soccer game. Um and I'll I'll put them on my list. Uh, wanted oh, yeah. to say that Isaiah O'Farrow, the linebacker and offensive weapon for o- Oxford Hills, is really good at defense. He was always in the backfield, had a couple sacks, tackled for loss, and I would just be really scared if he was running at me. That's all. Just wanted to add that in. Don't oh, yeah. say anything bad then. Nope. He's a great uh, guy. Great player. I, I have no confessions to make of what I'm afraid of, afraid of right now. Adam, did you race walk away from him? Absolutely not. Nope. <laughs> Be tough. Um, yeah, but yeah, there's some good soccer games tomorrow. Uh, Edward Little and Lewis and girls play at Edward Little. At EL, yep. And um, Lewiston, the Lewiston boys host Camden Hills, which is really, that's a, that's a high, high-powered match. Yeah. Uh, did they? And yeah. Camden Hills' only loss is to Lewiston at home. Uh, in the first game of the season. So okay. uh, it'll be really good. I think they're the two top heel points teams. Um, and it'll be a uh, really fun. I'm looking forward to it. And then Lewiston has EL at EL, I think, on Tuesday. So Tuesday, yeah. Um, to finish off the regular season for them. So uh, this is uh, crunch time. And it's just a couple games removed from that Brunswick draw. And the three, two win over Mesolonsky. So I, we got to see if Lewiston can kind of bounce back and make a statement right before the playoffs, or, or I get to see how good Camden Hills is. So yeah, the and wind the jammers, the wind jammers of Camden. I was in Camden yesterday. It's, it's a, it's a nice little town. Beautiful town. Yep. Yeah. Really good. Um, all right, guys. Well, thank you very much. And uh, thank you. Lee. Uh, take care. Be good to yourselves. Yep. And each other. <laughs>